Hey, it's Captain Matt, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon, and today we're going to talk about a new announcement in the industry, the new Sea-Doo pontoon or tritune. Um, it's called the Sea-Doo Switch. I wanted to kind of talk through a few things, my my initial reaction. Now, I haven't seen one in person. There's none around for, for me to, to get on and to see. Um, so I'm just going by the videos, the research I've done, and I wanted to point out a few things that, to me, uh, are important to know as, as you're looking at this. Now, to be fair, I am not the target market for the sea switch. I, I believe this is for people that are jet skiers, that love the water, love their jet ski, love the speed, love the agility, and they're having families, they're having kids, they want to take some friends out, but they really like the platform and first-time boaters that say, hey, uh, let's get something that is a little bit more affordable, although that's debatable uh, as you start looking at everything. But uh, that's where this is targeted. So let's go ahead and just look at the website and what you're going to find. So the first thing to look at is the links that they have available. Now, they have a 13 foot, which is just under 13 feet. They have a 19 foot and a 21 foot. So the biggest one that they have is a 21 foot. Now, let me tell you, I, I've talked about this in some of my other videos, but it's the, the importance of length on a pontoon. So if you think about, if you think about a wave and you think about the length of a boat, okay? So each of my fingers is a wave. If you can kind of see that, I don't know how well this is going to turn out, but I've never described it like this. Uh, but if you think about the waves like this, um, what happens is you come over the first wave and you're automatically, you're going to hit the second one just because you're long enough. But what happens is if you're too short, you can miss that third wave and you can just nosedive. Uh, it, it happens with pontoons that are typically under 18 feet. So with the 13 and the 18 foot pontoon, you can get in the situation if you're on a, a rough day that you're going to start taking waves over the bow. Um, on a 20 foot and above, usually 22, you're long enough that you're going to you're going to get across the first wave, the crest of the second wave to the third wave versus what I call rocking horse, where you hit the first wave, the second wave, and then that third wave, you're not quite long enough and you take a nosedive, especially if you've got weight in the bow. And, um, and I think that that's the case for a lot of pontoons. They've got their weight set up that way. So that's my first thought on the lengths. Now let's go ahead and I'm just going to play their marketing video. The first thing that you see is it's kind of a plastic construction. I guess it's the same material that they use on their entry level spark. So it's just kind of a, a hard plastic, um, which is, is great uh, because, you know, as you hit things, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be pretty rugged. The question is, if you, can you puncture the tubes? What happens if you puncture a tube? So on the aluminum skin, you can certainly puncture them, um, but they're usually chambered and you can either weld it to replace it or just replace the tube. With all of this being, it appears to be just a, a single molded piece. What's going to happen if you hit a log, if you hit a rock, um, are those going to be I would assume difficult to puncture. You got to hit something really hard, but what happens if you do, are, are they chambered? Uh, they don't talk about that at all. And are they replaceable? So if you do hit that, is the boat totaled or is there a way for them to, for them to repair it? So the other, the other question that I have is the, the gates. So I don't see on any of the side paneling, that there's any gates. If you look, this front section appears like it could be a gate. I don't see any hinges. I don't see if it opens in, I probably wouldn't see them, but you don't see anybody opening that. Um, so I'm not sure that it is, which means that it's, it's going to be a little bit more difficult to get in. And there's really not much of a front porch on there. Um, so where is the, where is the boarding? You don't really see anybody step on in, in all of the video. And I'm going to, you can see again how short that front is. And this is the 21 footer. You, you just saw it right there. A little bit of that rocking horse effect 
watch it as they see how they go down in that wave. And this is a nice smooth day. They've got most of their weight is forward of the of midship. So they've got these two people up front. The third person's up front. This guy's about parallel with the driver. Now they do have the the jet engine, or not the jet engine, the engine with the jet drive on the back, which adds a little bit of weight. But as you get another two people up front, you know what's going to happen. And this is the twenty-one foot. If it's the thirteen, and you've got that weight up front, what's going to happen as you rock over those over those wakes? Okay. So again, as you look, this has the optional um, back platform. Uh, which I think gets them to the length that they're talking about, but the the actual tunes and the the length of the boat is just a little shorter than than what they're saying. There might be a gate on that back corner. It was hard to tell again if that was going to operate as a gate. The this is all that hard plastic. These are like clear plastic screens. I think um, I don't think they're a mesh. I think it's actually a, a plastic screen, maybe an Isinglass type material, but. Um, that's something that's that's interesting as far as the looks go. I mean, it's it's new, it's different, um, so it's going to look a little a little odd, but not all bad. You can see that material. That's a just a plastic screen that kind of it, it's got. They've got some special clip system that allows things to get clipped in there. Um, they've got their their cleat on the corner here that um, is you got to lean down to get to it, but. Um, there's that bimini top that folds out, locks in, uh, a, a nice bimini. You can get the extended bimini, the option. They've got this Isinglass enclosure that they're um, they're marketing, which I don't know if that really goes with the the way I see the Spark user. You can kind of see that plastic sort of flopping in the wind, sort of that Isinglass. Now this is this is what to me is you really need to think about how you would use a pontoon. Um, if you've ever ridden jet skis, I, I've got to ride uh, their Yamaha skis um, that my my girls love when we go to the lake in Tennessee that my in-laws have. The top of the line, they've got the cruise control. But here's what's happening when you're, when you're out running on that is I, I, I set the cruise control, but when you're doing the cruise control, you still have to hold that lever down. So... It's it's easier, but you've got to be gripping that at all times, okay? So now I understand that they've got to have the handlebars because they have their docking modes. They've got their forward and reverse and docking modes. Um, they've got their cruise control button on that handlebar, and this is the way they do it on their skis. But the reality of driving a boat, when I'm driving a boat and we're just cruising, which is what you do most of the time in a pontoon is I've got, you know, a finger or two on the steering wheel and just kind of relaxing, kicked off to the side. So I've got my view set up. I may be even standing up and just holding the steering wheel with one hand um, so I can get a better line of sight if it's busy out. I've got the throttle set. Um, and it's, you know, on the traditional throttle on a, a, a outboard motor, but with this, you've got to have your hand on the right steering wheel or right handlebar, I guess. And you've got to be holding down that lever, uh, to set your cruise. Now, if as soon as you let go, the cruise shuts off and you're, you slow down real quick. Um, so I'm curious to know what the experience is like when you are running that boat and you're just cruising around. If you've got to hold that just right, if you've ever ridden a jet ski or driven a jet ski, it's hard to hold that at a perfect speed and that your fingers get tired really easy. And even the cruise control where you hold it down, there's still... It's it's still you got to have your hand on that handlebar, and then you if you move anything, it steers it. So you can't stand up really, um, you can't lounge out. You've got to always be on that and and steering the whole time. And also the steering on a jet ski is is very very maneuverable because you you only go you know that that little bit um, you know so that that little bit will spin your jet ski around. I'm curious as to how they've adjusted their steering so that you're not spinning people and making it uncomfortable and unsafe for people on your, uh, on your pontoon. And then the other thing um, that I, I'm curious about is 
how that throttle is going to keep and maintain a, a consistent speed. You know, because usually when you're driving a boat, if you're if you're a first time boat buyer considering this, is when you go, you're going to set the throttle at 15 miles an hour or 3,000 RPM or 4,000 RPM if you want to go a little faster, and then you just set it. And so that way you've got a nice consistent speed that you're going. Um, with this and having that throttle, everything about a jet ski is designed for quick performance and speed and agility. Uh, and, and the pontoon experience is, is almost the exact opposite. So I'm curious about that right there. The, the steering wheel has, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a different experience, better or worse. I don't know, uh, but definitely different for uh, if you have boating experience. The other thing that they've done is they've made their seating configurations modular. You can see these kind of seating tiles that they have. They look like they're probably 18 inches um, by 18 inches little squares. And they've got some of them that are flat, comfortable surfaces for your flooring. And other ones have this attachment point for different um, mounts. Their seating, their cooler mount, they've all got the similar mount. So you can actually configure it for different things. Maybe very handy if you're, if you're fishing and cruising um, and you want different setup for both. Uh, but it's definitely a, a unique system and, and could be nice. You can see they just kind of interlock with each other. Now, based on my experience, your your seating configuration, you're going to have just one or two of them that you would use. So you're not I don't see that you're going to be changing this around all the time, although they say it's it's pretty quick and easy to do it. Um, there's another video where a, a couple is walking around uh, showing it. And if you look, this is a, a spot where you can actually attach your cooler, which is kind of cool. But if you look at the at one of the tiles, is you know this is their promo video and, and you see that this tile is kind of curving up a little bit so how are those floor mats are, are they going to stay down it, it was this just a fluke thing that because they were they were, this is the demo boat the first one is it wasn't fully complete the way they're going to produce them uh, but that kind of concerns me that that flips up and is um you know potentially a, a tripping thing or just you know, your looks, looks bad. And, uh, and are they going to blow out? How are they, how are they actually attached? I don't know. Kind of a cool system for the table. I like that adjustable base. So you don't have that big long pole. I really like this, um, this anchor locker. It's a, a storage locker where you can just slip your anchor right down in there. Um, I, I think Barletta has started doing that on theirs, but I would love to see more pontoon manufacturers have a dedicated anchor storage uh, where you can get that up out of the way. It's on the bow of the boat. It doesn't have to go up under the under a seat, so you're not dragging that um, wet, muddy anchor and, and anchor road in, but you actually can just slip it in there, and uh, that looks to be a, a pretty well thought out design they've got a bunch of these add-on accessories that um you know you can it's kind of like the harley davidson model boston whaler does it with their um with their super sport series um kind of it just these are the accessories for this boat and you start adding on and adding on and customizing it it, it seems like that's the the approach that they're taking with this again if you look at the handlebar setup this is your brake Again, if you know how to operate your pontoon properly, the best boat captain on the water training, we talk about that. Um, and then this is your throttle. You have got to hold that throttle down when you're cruising, whether it's you know a small amount or whether it is you set the cruise control and you mash it all the way down. Um, but you've got to have your hand, your right hand on that throttle control all the time, unless they're doing something where you don't. Um, and then you know, how do you shut it off? So that's a, I, I'm, I'm really curious as to how that's going to work. They've got their docking modes. That's probably the cruise control button and, um, and setting that up. You know, it can turn super sharp. Look, look at that on the steering wheel. I, I mentioned in an earlier comment about, you know, they're, these jet skis are designed to be super maneuverable Look at how how tight they're turning. You know that's your that's not very far to turn to make that turn in its as tight as it can. If you're doing that at full throttle, if you're doing that at full speed, man, how what's that going to feel like on the boat? Now, if you're a, if you've got a regular steering wheel, 
you got to go around three times to get to that um, to get to that whole spot versus just boom and you're there. Um, so I, I I'm very interested in in operating one of these uh, to see what the experience is. I'm sure the attorneys have had their um, have had their testing done to make sure that they're comfortable. And if you look at that hull, you can see those aren't your traditional pontoons. They're not the round tubes with the nose cone is they've, they've got a little bit different design. I haven't been able to find an image of what the back looks like because you know that engine is sitting in there. Now, the jet engines, the engines for the jet drives are really low profile. They, they build them to be really short so they can fit in the jet skis. Um, so I'm, I, I don't know what that engine compartment looks like. I haven't been able to find a good image of that, but you can see sort of that tri-tune setup up front, but I think there's a lot more hull in the water on the back end. Again, the that gate in the back, it, it looks like one of those may be a gate, but based on the way she sat there, I don't think that it probably is going to be. The add-on um, swim platform, again, a, a spot for a cooler mount. They package them up with the boat motor and trailer. Uh, which is is a little bit more common in the um, in the entry level area. So here's a little bit better picture of the the tunes. So you can see they're not round. They've got kind of a unique design, and that center tube starts out pretty pretty um, narrow, and then it widens up again because you've got to have that spot for the for the engine and the drive system to come out at the right water depth, and you also have to have the engine pickup. Now, obviously, they're using the Rotax engines. Uh, here we go. The um, the engine packages up to 230 horsepower at um, 36.5, and then you start adding on your accessories, and that's that's the MSRP with the um, with the trailer, and again with with certain options, you know, 42.6, you know, which is going to get you a a 20 to 22 foot pontoon with maybe a 50 up to about a 115 double tube. So it's not going to get you a tri-tune. You're going to be hard-pressed to get a tri-tune for anything um, under 45 probably on that. So that is it. I'm gonna, I, I've am gonna. i got on the mailing list. I'm going to try to to work my way into it. Uh, but you can go check out the videos and uh, let me know your thoughts on this. I, I, I've you know, as a boater, I'm not the marketplace. I've, I've read comments from boaters that are like, this is the stupidest thing in the world. Uh, why would you put handlebars on a boat, uh, to jet skiers and, uh, power sports people and non boaters that are like, Oh my God, that's awesome. You can change the deck layout. Um, it's gotta be a blast to drive. Um, so I, I'm, I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Let me know in the comments. And as soon as I get the opportunity to see one in person and maybe even operate one, uh, you'll be seeing another video. Thanks a lot. And remember, life truly is better on a boat. Leave a comment. Subscribe if you like these videos. And it, tell me if you like these kind of review videos, uh, especially without the slides and just going off the website and videos, if that's something that you enjoy or not.